Hello Akuma fans, this is Charlie with the Gossiper Applications staff with another tip for you. Today we're dealing with the Akuma Multis and the U-Machine that is a Multis with a lower turret. You can see in my uh, graphic here the kind of machine we're dealing with today has an upper turret with a B-axis and milling spindle and a lower turret and because this machine is uh, so very busy we do have the possibility of having a very lengthy program and uh, a customer asked me for a couple of tricks on how to deal with this. Here's my first observation in my program here I have one we're calling large program dot min and you notice that the size of it we're over two and a half megabytes or almost two and a half meg so it's uh, it's up there it fits in the control no problem however if you notice when I do my program select and I try to pick up this large program that guy right there and say okay it'll think about it it'll start digesting start digesting and then all of a sudden it's gonna tell me no stinking way program buffer overflow it's just too big so now we need to figure out how to deal with this the first method is to break up the program into smaller files as you can see I've done that here one two and three and I'll separate it say by either spindles or tools or operations doesn't really matter I can break these up into small sizes and run them one at a time hey that's great but once I prove the program works how in the world can I go into operation when after each tool or each feature or each operation I have to come back over and select another program that's where we're going to use the Akuma schedule program or .sdf so what I can do is create a new file and this in this case it's going to be an NC program by default it says a.min but watch I'm going to do something a little different here I'm going to call this large and instead of calling it dot min I'm going to say dot sdf or schedule program now when I say okay it took it everybody's happy and now I am making a master program which is going to automatically select each of those individual programs this SDF program is going to look an awful lot like a regular part program but we're going to use some fancy uh, some fancy secondary words like for instance uh, the word P select I'm going to use that to call the individual program that I want to run first so in this case if you recall we said that uh, we're going to do large dash one dot min then I will p select large hyphen two dot min and then p select large three there we go now that's going to run each individual tool and then instead of using m2 to or m30 to signify the end of the program I use the word end once I say quit stop and I confirm that I do want to save it now I have a large dot SDF program I have a schedule program that's going to call each of those individually when I come over to my main operating screen and I do program select you'll notice up at the top I've got tabs that I usually ignore program select IGF data if I've done the uh, advanced one touch programming there's a tab for schedule if I tap that now I get to see that schedule program that I saw previously and by simply selecting it and saying OK now I see my schedule program on this side and as I execute the programs I will see them show up over here that is the easiest way plus it makes life a little bit uh, a little bit better for you if you have um, uh, if you have to do a mid tape restart some programs can get to be so long that if you're doing a restart function you may have to sit there for several minutes while you're waiting for the computer to find that spot where you want to restart however since each one of these part programs uh, let's go take a look at it each one of these part programs starts with the actual code as if it were a solo operation it starts with the basic code so I can 
use my arrow key as long as I'm in automatic mode and I've selected that program notice that the little chevron over here I can place that right where I want to restart then I'll have to hit the interlock release key on my machine control while hitting cycle start but I can execute from that line instead of having to dry run or uh, restart search through that entire first tool this is kind of a uh, it's kind of a handy way of doing things and it is one that I prefer however let's say for instance my program is so long but it's only a single tool notice I've got this large program dot min right here and wow how in the world am I gonna break that up when it's only a single tool well Akuma has thought of us in this regard too I have a, a another directory where I can store this program and run it specifically now if you forget this initial here's a great method for figuring it out from our main operating screen if I do my program select I have a word device down over here if I hit that guy it gives me the opportunity to run directly from a terminal connection that's our uh, our network if we've uh, networked the machine or the HD 0 the hard drive 0 by placing our program in the HD 0 the machine has the ability to basically DNC or drip feed from that directory so I'm gonna cancel to get myself all the way out of this and I'll show you the process this pro this is my large program here if it resides in the MD1 or machine directory 1 I it tries to load the whole thing from the MD1 into my OSP buffer causing that overflow so I'm going to move it over by touching directory display and they don't have a shortcut key to the HD0 uh, from this toolbar so by selecting another display and come up to the second device name not the first one I want that to be MD1 because that's where my program is but now by copying this format here but calling up HD0 colon and of course add the star dot star now when I click on OK here's that HD0 directory and here's my MD1 and by simply selecting the large program and then saying copy to the right now I've made a copy over to my HD0 everybody's happy now let's go ahead and see this thing execute I'm gonna do program select right now if I go back to my program select screen hey, we already know that that's the one in the MD1 I know because it's showing me right here and if I try to select that it no go so by touching device and changing the MD1 to HD0 there it is now if I select that large program from this HD0 and say OK it'll do a little file reading file reading file reading basically it's just scanning through the program to make sure that uh, there are no immediate errors boom and now I'm loaded and cycle start I can run an extra large program through the um, uh, without having to break it up and without getting the buffer overflow errors now some of you may have been able to follow along with this and uh, everything's done everything's happy then there's going to be a small percentage of you that are following along and say hey okay now I did the program select wait a second I don't have the device name button that Charlie talked about right here what in the world's going on so let me show you how to enable that if it has not already been done I'm gonna cancel to get out of that and bring this over this is the uh, graphic resemblance of your keypad on the, the machine control. You get that little black button for machine operation that I'm sure you're way familiar with for its use in the, um, the ATC, this guy right here, the recovery. But down near the bottom, you'll find a button called DNC that you probably haven't used very often. If you select that guy, this is going to turn on the entire function that I just described so by touching DNC 
and then utilizing your F1 key to turn on communication. Now mine's over here on the side, but when I touch it, it says, hey, please reboot because it, uh, it wants me to cycle the machine power. Now that I've done it, I'm going to pause the recording and cycle power. We'll see what happens. All right, now my power is coming back up, and as my uh, machine is rebooting, I want to mention that this option is called DNC DT operation, and it comes uh, it comes with any Multis or U machine, but it is available for the L products as well. So let's go ahead and uh, finish up my boot up, and now, as mentioned before, if I hit the program select. Now I have the device button on the bottom where I can switch over. And everything that you've seen in this video is now active. How cool is that? So now you have several options for large programs on the Multis. And it's up to you to decide which one is the best for your particular application. If you need any additional assistance, please reach out to your local Gossiker Applications staff. We're here to help you. Thanks.